Hi everyone, it's it's that time again for another Arts and Culture Hot Top 10 with, with one of our full members of the Arts and Culture Network. Uh, my name is Mark Wormsley and I'm the founder of the network. And as I speak and record this with Joey, we are just about to hit 21,000 members in our LinkedIn group with 75 or so new members every day, which is very exciting. So um, thank you if you're um, a member. If you're watching this, you're pro you probably are, which is great. So I'm joined by Joey Barron of Dream Up Consulting. Joey is one of our founder members, actually, been uh, with us um, an awful long time, one of the first to become a full member, for which I'm eternally grateful. Joey, would you um, like to say hello and just introduce yourself briefly? Hi, uh, I'm Joey Barron. I am uh, in Western Massachusetts. I'm a proud member of the network and uh, discovered it in the midst of the pandemic. And as a sole practitioner, it was a, it still is a really important just kind of social resource uh, reminder that I'm glad I'm alive and that there are all sorts of interesting people in the world that I get to meet. Um, and it's been fantastic. That's great. Thank you for that. Um, and we had a conversation recently in which you described yourself as a creative resource. I love that. So I know that you, you're, you're keen to connect with organizations that need a little bit of a boost in their level of creativity by way of um, creative input that you, that you can bring. And so what we'll do is we'll make sure that all your contact details are uh, right. in this video but uh but this is the fun part um because this for the benefit of, the, of those who haven't yet had the pleasure of meeting you this is a really good opportunity for us to have a con conversation led by these 10 this top 10 idea um so that and inevitably they spark conversations and and the end result will be that people will have felt felt that they've got to know you a little bit better and, and it won't be quite such a um, a cold call could somebody get in touch. So um, I should point out to our, our viewers uh, that Joey has had no warning about this, <laughs> which is great fun. Um, so it's off the cuff. And um, if you don't have a favorite in any of these categories, it's fine to, to say, not my bag. Okay? okay. So my first question for you, Joey, is do you have a favorite building that leaps to mind? Oh, a favorite building. What a great question. Um, I'd have to say the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Um, okay. Just just because I live in Boston, I you know I get to New York once or twice a year, um, and I just think both from a design point of view, from the quality of its presentation um, and for the amazing curatorial resources that they have. Um, I never ever leave there uh, uninspired. Uh, yeah. There's always something that I go, that was really cool. Uh, even it might be, you know, and there'll be a whole bunch of things like, boy, I have no idea what any of that was about, uh, but that's okay too. Uh, so that okay. would be that's probably one of the more inspiring places I've go to. MoMA, Museum of Modern Art in um, in New York. Yes, we we might try and list these in where this video great. is so that people click through and go and see where it is. Okay, that's great. Thank you for that. Um, and the second question is: Do you have a favorite book that you you seem to return to? Uh. I don't have a favorite book that I return to. Uh, it's very rare for me to read a book more than once. Um, but, and my favorite book changes all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, it would be this strange book that I read called The Nix, N-I-X. I don't remember the author's name. It's his, it's his first novel. It was written like 10, 15 years ago. Uh, his second novel has yet to appear. Uh, and it's this wild, like very 1960s inspired story of a washed up academic English professor uh, who is pissed away his, uh, his advanced check to write a book. 
um, and grew up, his mother left him when he was a child. And the mother becomes a political celebrity for throwing mud at the governor's face in some uh, rally for some cause or another. And the publisher says, you know, rather than give us back the money, uh, we want you to do a story about your mother. Um, and it's somebody he hasn't spoken to in 40 odd years. Uh, and it's the story of, of all of that. And it's beautifully written. The first two thirds of it just fly by. The last third I think is like a typical kind of first novel where it's kind of like, okay, I need to end this and how do I end it? Uh, but mm -hmm. there's there's one chapter. It's really it's like one of the most impressive chapters that I've ever read. Um, he uh, he's in his uh, academic office and it's office hours, and uh, a student comes into his office and she's complaining about uh, her grade that he has failed her in the class and nobody has ever failed this woman before and how dare she and each page of the chapter is a different excuse that she gives for why she should pass him. And it's so hysterical. And you can picture this really entitled woman just like going on and on about, you know, and it even gets to the point where she says, you know, you know, well, I've used this paper at three other classes and nobody else has flunked me, <laughs> you know? And it's like, <laughs> it's this great, it's a really beautiful piece of writing uh, and it's oh, a really okay. good book. It's called The Knicks, and I The Knicks, yep. Okay, that's great. Thank you. I'm going to dig that one out. Um, now, do you have a favorite dancer or dance group? Uh, well, on two levels. Um, there's a dance company in Boston. I'm very biased. There's a dance company in Boston that just got signed to one of the major dance touring organizations called Boston Dance Theater. Uh, they're a client. Uh, I have been a creative coach for the director. Um, I think she's really onto something. I think there's something really accessible but thought provoking about her work uh, that I'm really proud to have anything to any affiliation with whatsoever. On the national level, um, I had this amazing occasion in, in, when I was in high school at a at the high school across the street. And this is a Boston City High School. This is a place with these are like really dilapidated buildings. And um, but Merce Cunningham and John Cage did a live performance, and and I went knowing that. You know, I had just heard about John Cage's moments of silence and just like, you know, and his playing inside the piano. And I just went, kind of go, this is going to be something weird. Let's go see what this is about. And and it was magnificent. And this is this is 40 years ago. And, you know, Merce Cunningham was still like a striking older presence on stage then. Uh, that was a that was a great probably the highlight of a dance moment in my life. Love that. It would be lovely to see if there's any footage of that available. Um, it's pre video that. camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So, this one, I'd like you to, um, based on your perception of its culture, what country would you choose to live in if you had to change countries? Oh, great. Um... You know, Italy for the food, uh, and uh, we had an amazing time in Costa Rica, and Costa Rica has all of this jungle and beach beauty, and, uh, you know, that considered the Switzerland of Latin America. Uh, they have been able to remain wow, neutral. I've never heard of it. Yeah, they've yeah. been able to remain neutral and democratic. Uh, you know, with Panama next door, with, you know, with Mexico next door, they, they uh, and somehow they have this kind of 
a solid, I don't even know if, I didn't even think they were a progressive society, but it's a society that um, recognizes that uh, that government shouldn't get in the way of you. You know, it, uh, it should be there to help you and not to hinder you. Um, and it's just that. gorgeous there, so. Yeah, Costa Rica, I got it. Um, now, as a um, as a participant or or someone in the audience or the crowd, do you have a favorite sport? Oh yeah, I'm a, I grew up uh, with uh, the Boston Celtics basketball team uh, in the '60s when they won 12 championships out of 14 years with Bill Russell. Uh, I had season tickets throughout Larry Bird's career. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a big old school basketball fan, uh, like, like all of the old cranks that in my generation, I think we're losing a little bit of interest because of the three point shot and the game has changed so much in our lifetime. Uh, mm -hmm. but that's still, that's still my go-to sport. That's the game I like watching. Uh, Great. Basketball, preferably with Larry Bird. <laughs> okay. Um, and do you have a, a favorite music genre? Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm like a, I'm a pop culture guy. I'm like, I'm like the indie singer songwriter, uh, kind of character. Probably right now, um, the group I listen to most is Wilco. Uh, I think Wilco is just pretty brilliant at what they do. Uh, I've been a big Elvis Costello fan, uh, and he's losing me as he loses his voice, but it's fine. Uh, and um, yeah, so I'm of that kind of like, you know, but at the same time, like I think, um, like I really like Kendrick Lamar. I think Kendrick Lamar is pretty brilliant. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's not something I listen to regularly, uh, but when I feel like I want some inspiration, I'll listen to him. Same way I feel like I feel that way about like Tom Waits. I think Tom Waits is brilliant, but I have to be in a very specific mood to listen to Tom Waits. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. And that's, that's good. So it's eclectic pop uh, taste. Eclectic. I love that. Um, it's funny that there was, I, I interviewed one of our um, one of the ladies who's recently joined us. Um, had a chance to chat to her. And um, she was the least likely person to be a, 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 a hip hop fan. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was such an eye opener. It was great, yeah. pretty funny. Um, it's, it, it's, I always get surprised in one of these characters, in one of these. Um, of course. Here, which, is, which is lovely. Um, so, how about a visual artist? Do you have a favorite visual artist? Uh, favorite visual artist. It would probably be a photographer. Uh, well, for, for a non-photographer, it would be Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, for a photographer, it might be, it might be Harry Callahan, uh, who was a, in the vanguard of using color film, was started as a black and white photographer and started using color. I think his work's really wonderful. Uh, okay. Those would be those would be the main ones. Thank you. And the next one, I'm nearly there. The next one is: Do you have a favorite play or musical? Uh, yeah. So I have. Uh, I've got. I've got to share three of them. So uh, my favorite musical at this point would probably be Spring Awakening. Um, my favorite play was a performance of an old Italian folktale called The King's Stag. Um, and it was done at American Repertory Theater, which was the theater that Julie Taymor was involved with before she became a Broadway director before the Lion King and all of that. Um, and King Stag was this tale where a lot of like the mechanics and the 
whole animation kinds of things uh, that are part of Lion King were all done the King Stag um, in this really small theater. Uh, and whereas I, I don't read books very often, I saw that play three times. Uh, and it each time it was one of those experiences where I walked out and I just said, you know, I'm glad to be alive. You know, aren't human beings amazing that they could do that? You know, and that, you know, and that I got to see it. It was like such a like moment of awe. And it was that way all three times I saw it. I actually went the third time thinking like, that can't happen a third time. And it did. Uh -oh. So that would be my favorite play. Uh, my favorite musical moment would be uh, when I was really little. Uh, my uh, my folks, when we lived in Boston, uh, their only vacation was they would go to New York two, three times a year, and they would spend the weekend in Broadway theaters. Uh, and once at one of those trips a year, they would take my brothers and I. Um, and one year, they sent my older brother and I with my grandmother, who I worshipped, for a weekend of theater in New York. And we saw the original cast of uh, Fiddler on the Roof. And my grandmother had left Russian shtetls when she was 12. Um, and to see that with this woman who I just adored and to get even this fictional insight into what her life might have been like uh, was just a, a moment I still remember. No, yeah, that's uh, that's my favorite musical musical theater moment. My favorite musical would be Spring Awakening, right? Now. Nice. I was asked a similar question recently, and and when I interview people and ask them these questions, it's obvious often a chance for me to reflect. And I think I'd have two favorite musical moments. the The first was seeing and meeting Buddy Rich when I was <laughs> nine at Ronnie, Scott, Ronnie Scott's club in in Soho in London. Um, and the second was meeting Leonard Bernstein, who came to uh, to conduct. We, uh, I was at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama mm -hmm. in the 80s, and um, we were performing his mass, which is rarely performed. Mm -hmm. it, it requires a, a big orchestra and band and, um, and cast. And he came in and um, conducted some of it for a rehearsal, which was fantastic. I loved it. That was really good. So, but I love those. Those oh. musical moments, great, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, uh, one of my, uh, just the, the last big production I did before COVID was a tribute to Leonard Bernstein on, uh, for part of his 100th birthday celebration. Uh, he was a Boston resident, we went to the same high school. Uh, and oh. uh, it, I had this idea to uh, take his take a selection of his music and have it performed by somebody you would never expect to perform it. Uh, and uh, it was quite a production with ASCAP and working the rights out and figuring out following the, the foundation's guidelines and everything else. Uh, but it was an amazing night and uh, his daughters actually came um, and his daughters, and this was towards the end of all of these celebrations said that it was probably the most creative of the tribute celebrations that they had been to. Uh, you know, Cause they got to have a bluegrass version of Dear Officer Krupke for crying out loud. It was like, <laughs> you know, we, you know we, I really just tried to find these like respectful oddball combinations of song and performer. It was great. It's really fun. Love that. Um, and this is the second from last, and then I'm going to do a few quick either mm -hmm. or, or um, a film, a favorite film. Uh, my favorite year. Uh, it's uh, it's the story of the early days of TV with an aspiring comedy writer uh, and. Uh, it's live TV. It's based on the Sid Caesar show. Uh, and Peter O'Toole 
is this swashbuckling actor uh, who is everybody's hero and he's the special guest. And it also turns out he's a depressed drunk. Uh, and, and this young boy worships him and how he deals with being his host in New York City and keeping him sober enough for the performance. And it's, uh, it's great. It's really just, I love that movie. So. Brilliant. And so the last one here before we do the quick either ors, which is quite fun. Um, apart from me, what was the last thing that made you laugh? Uh, well, my wife's hysterical. Uh, you know, it's, uh, and I don't even know what she said, but like, you know, I don't think a day goes by where we're not laughing about something. Uh, the last and, thing, I love that. Um, the last, my wife is similarly amusing and, and her classic line, which I, I always remember was, um, I do have a tendency to work late at night and have a siesta in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that was a nocturnal working habit developed during the pandemic, in fact. But, um, but I, so I've got a bit of a reputation in my family for, bit, for sleeping quite a lot. Right? Um, and, um, and she said we had friends around and she said, um, Mark spends so much time asleep, I've forgotten what colour his eyes are. <laughs> nice. 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 Um, you share the yeah. napping. I'm the master of the 20 minute nap. I can go. You I, know, can just... I, so I, I can do that as well. Have you heard of Nappuccinos? as well no no i love it though i'll take a two nappuccino, <laughs> you, a nappuccino is you you have a double espresso um and then you lie down and the double espresso wakes you up 20 or 30 minutes later yeah. um yeah. and they used to do it apparently in victorian and, and dickensian london there was a, i read somewhere um that people used to hold they would if they wanted a, a, a and they had no clocks or watches locally around. If they wanted to have a, a quick lie down but not be asleep for too long, they would lie down and, and hold a, a large iron key in their hand balanced over the bed, over the side of the bed. And they would only drop it if they fell asleep. Um, and I don't know about you, but I can I, I can fall asleep really quickly and and it's like a computer reboot. I can be asleep for seven minutes and still and feel refreshed. Yep. strange um but the other one i heard recently I'm, I'm digressing here but do you know the origins of the word hangover no i had i had no idea but in in dickensian london there used to be kind of buildings and sheds that had ropes um stretched across them at waist height um and because people used to drink themselves into oblivion and would fall in a in a in a very messy gutter and probably get nibbled at by rats or robbed, mm -hmm. blind drunk. They would pay the owner of this building a penny or something, and they would literally hang themselves. <laughs> over, over the you know, so that the so that the rats couldn't get to their 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 face. And that's there, yeah, that's the origins of hangover. The other one I love, I stop me because I've got lots of these. You know, no, that's you know great. people you know when people clink their glasses together and say cheer? Yep. yep. Do you know what the origin of that is? No. Um, apparently, it, what we used to do back in the day was to, to, to prove to your drinking partner that you weren't trying to poison them. You would pour a little bit of your drink into theirs and they would pour a little bit of theirs back into yours. So that if you were, if anyone was trying to be poisoned, you'd both be poisoned. Um, and that got abbreviated to, to the, to oh. the I, I, I'm full of that sort of stuff. Thanks. Trivia. Anyway, so we're going to do a quick round of either or. Okay. okay? Um, and then we'll, then we'll wrap it up. So red or white wine? Uh, red. Okay. Radio or TV? TV. Tea or coffee? Uh, coffee. Um, working out or vegging out? Oh, vegging out. <laughs> every, every, every moment, please. Um, Netflix in or night out? Uh, night out. Okay. Um, dressing up or dressing down? Uh, 
I like dressing up, but I love dressing down. So I'd have to say, you know, okay. it's my, my shower daily. Or bath. A shower. Shower, or bath. shower. Okay. Numbers or words? Words. Yeah, I was, I'm with you. Because <laughs> um, you know what else is good about that? It's all numbers ends up being words too. So it's good, you know, it's like. Yeah. Um, cats or dogs? Oh, dogs. Kids do um, Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Night owl or early bird? Night out. Not an early bird whatsoever. Yeah. Book or podcast? Book. There we go. That's it, Joey. We've done it. So wow. For anyone, for fun. anyone who's, <laughs> what fun, wasn't it? For anyone who's um, got the stamina to listen to these from one end to the other, <laughs> um, they, they will now be um, graced with a much better understanding of what makes you tick, um, which is great. So what I'll do is um, I'll uh, edit this and we'll put it on the LinkedIn group so that some of our members can and uh, can watch and feel as though they've got to know you a bit better. And we'll put it on the on the website as well, and it'll end up on the YouTube channel somewhere. If that's great, the thing. great. And those, and you'll have a shareable link with that because I'll, I'll I'll share it across my platform. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So thanks, Joey, and I shall see you soon. Yes. Um, at one of our next events. Okay, Mark. Thank you for everything, and uh, stay well. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye.